In the story, the narrator narrates that, due to a mutation incident, many people in the city are sick. He says that because of the disease, some have the ability to control and command the fishes and have become the king of sea. And some have the ability to spit mucus and become shooting warriors. And then there's one who's thick skin. A guy is praising his beauty while taking a selfie, saying that this face is just freaking handsome when the sun shines on it. The narrative says he is the protagonist. The guy says that his handsome face is a problem. He wonders how other men can live when he has such a handsome face. The narrator says that, to avoid paying rent, he would go to the extent of hitting himself. The guy actually hits himself with a plate. He shows his injury to the owner, telling him to see that whenever he goes insane, he even hurts himself. The narrator says that, to collect debts, he would even kill anyone who blocked his way, and he actually snacks on a person's face. The narrator says that if he could not beat them, something would happen. Oddly, he asks a debtor to call him father, and then he will give up money. He said good evening to those debtors, calling him his precious son. He shows the debtor's middle finger and says that he will let all of them have a taste of his fist. The narrator says that losing an argument is out of the question, so he decides to provoke the opposition party first. He says that even though that fool looks courageous, he says, as the saying goes, a hero struggles in a beauty's trap. The narrator says that for someone like him to fall in love in that mutated city is odd. The protagonist gets mesmerized by the beauty, and since then, his life has had a purpose. He blushes and runs, calling that girl to wait for him, saying that she is his goddess. He says that he will come back after getting the money. He excitedly says that he wants to fall in love. In the chapter 1, the year is 2022, and the humanity has released large quantities of nuclear contaminated water into the oceans. After the oceans were contaminated, vapors were trapped in the clouds through atmospheric circulation, and the radioactive waste contaminated the rainwater pouring down on land. Since then, people's lives have begun to change. After some years, in years 2042, Lee City, the protagonist bangs the clock and he wakes up. Someone bangs the door, saying that he knows he is in there. The owner shouts at him, telling him to I don't think he will be fine if he stays silent, and the protagonist is using an elderly crutch walker to walk. He takes his medicines and stretches his arms, saying that his body is back. The protagonist angrily asks that man, when all he did was not pay rent for six months, if he is there for life. Man angrily tells him that he must pay him in full today no matter what, and he asks him how dare he spill it out so easily. The protagonist laughs and tells that man that he is already so old, but he still has such a bad temper that he tells him that he really is an old bastard. He tells him that even if he gets the money, he won't hand it over to him. He tells the old man that he will make him so mad that he will die from the anger. The old man gets triggered and he asks the protagonist if he should just place his speech bubble and internal monologue in reverse order. The protagonist laughs and apologizes to him, which burns the old man in anger. The old man gets angry and tells the protagonist that if he can't get the money, don't even think about leaving that place. But protagonist tells him that he have to go get the money in order to pay him, but the old man says that he refuses to listen, and he tells him not to dare run away. They both get triggered. The protagonist grabs his cup tightly in anger, and smash the cup on his head, to which the old man gets scared. The protagonist tells the old man that he better not cross him, as wherever he goes insane, he even hurts himself. The old man gets humbled, and he tells the protagonist that they have known each other for so long, and if there are problems, then they can discuss them, and he asks him why he is so angry, but the protagonist horrifically tells the old man that he wants him to head back right away, this instant, and wait patiently, to which the old man agrees. The next day, the protagonist is praising his beauty on the streets. Suddenly, he starts chasing a girl, to which the girl tells him to stop chasing her, calling him a pervert, but he says that he won't bite and lets him at her v-chat. But he tells her that he works there and tells her to visit when she's free. He smiles and says that girls are wonderful, but he decides that he needs to get money before starting to pick up girls. Then he went inside the credit loan office. A man sees Zheng Hu and says that he came in early today. The CEO of Integrity Credit Loan, Jia Cheng Xin, tells Zheng Hu that he should have given him a heads up 
that he was coming. He tells him to look at him now, as he couldn't even prepare a meal for him. However, Zheng Hu tells Cheng Xin that he should have paid his salary for the past few months by now, to which Cheng Xin tells him that he was just going to discuss that matter with him. Cheng Xin says that he doesn't have the funds to pay everyone, and tells him that his pay is also in the same situation. He says that he's been a bit tight on money recently. Zheng Hu gets triggered, and he asks Cheng Xin what he means. He reminds him that he is given the same response every time. But Cheng Xin tells him that he will definitely pay him the money. He tells him that they have known each other for such a long time, and he can't possibly cheat him. Cheng Xin says that even heaven knows that accidents happen, and this time, he mentions there's a savage person whose debt they have to recover. He says it has greatly affected their audit, so a large amount of debt couldn't be covered. Zheng Hu angrily asks him who the hell is that bastard with the death wish, daring to swallow his money, to which Cheng Xin tells him that not only this, his salary is in it too, and it's causing him a headache. He tells Zheng Hu that he will be able to get his money back, and he tells him that he has great faith in his abilities. Zheng Hu arrogantly tells him that, this time, when he gets the money back, he better pay his salary in full. Cheng Xin agrees with him with a greedy smile. Afterwards, while going, Zheng Hu said that he had never been to that street before. He thinks that he needs to find someone to ask for directions. Then he sees a girl at an old Chinese bookstore, and he calls her. He tells her that he would like to ask her for directions to that address calling him a handsome man. Then she turns and looks at him. He starts blushing. He feels that his heart is about to stop beating. However, the girl asks him where he wants to go, but he isn't able to speak properly, so she asks him if he wasn't able to speak just now. Then she tells him to let her take a look. She grabs his phone, and her hands touch his hand. His face got a flame as their hands touched. He wonders what the hell that girl is and what she did to him. He feels that his brain has already stopped processing, and the girl is telling him the direction. Then she goes back to her store. He goes inside the store, to which the giller asks him why he hasn't left. Zheng Hu gets puzzled. Then she asks him if he is there to buy a book. He agrees with her and says that he is there to buy books. Then he bought a bunch of books, but his balance is 0.08 yuan and his bill is 0.58 yuan. He just remembered that he doesn't have any money. He immediately runs and tells her that he has to get that money. Afterward, he arrived at the fish stall. He aggressively shouts at the fish seller, which grabs his attention. Everyone gets stunned. The man asks Zheng Hu why he is shouting at his stall and questions him about what the hell he thinks he is doing. Zheng Hu tells him that he is there to get his hands on his goddess. He made a mistake and everyone was stunned after hearing that. Then he tells him that he is there to take back his money. He mentions that he is on an integrity credit loan, and that he is there to collect the debt. The men get triggered, and he tells Zheng Hu to get Rin a wag, telling him not to interfere with his business. They arguses with each other's to ek every own runs away from fish seller stall. The man tells Zheng Hai that he had no other choice but to loan money from him in order to open that stall. But now that the time has changed, he tells him that he doesn't want to get involved with him anymore. He tells Zheng Hu that, while he is still holding back, it's best he take that chance to leave. So Zheng Hu asks him if he wants to start a fight now, and he asks him why doesn't he come and give it a try. Then the man starts awakening his power, and he tells Zheng Hu that he is the one Tay asked for this. Fish in the fish tanks are moving horrifically. The water slashes surround the stall owner. Zheng Hu wonders what's going on as the fish tanks are shaking and the fish are starting to get agitated. The man smiles and tells him that it looks like his college didn't tell him, and he asks him if he has ever wondered why they weren't able to collect the debts. But Zheng Hu tells him that this won't scare him away, and he tells him to give him a break, and he says that he's just using cheap tricks to frighten him. The fishes are eating Zheng Hu. The fish seller tells him that he has experienced fear, but he says it's already too late. But Zheng Hu didn't respond to which the man wonders if he's gone quiet. He says he may have gone overboard, and he wonders if he is dead. But suddenly, Zheng Hu cones out and charges at the man. He punched him and sent him away. The man falls to the ground, and he asks him why he is completely unscratched, 
To which Zheng Hu smiles and tells him that he's not the only one who was affected by the radiation. Zheng Hu mentions that, after suffering the effects of the radiation, his body would fossilize and harden like an elderly old. He also mentions that if he doesn't take his medication on time, then it's extremely difficult to move around freely. But he thanks that ability and says that man's body is rock solid and those fishes of his can't even scratch him. Then the man decides that he will have to use his ultimate ability. But he says that, since it's been released, he has no clue what the outcome would be. He says it's a ferocious beast, and he mentions that he encountered it when he was at sea. And due to a mutation, it became the king of the sea that only appears once in decades. He tells Zheng Hu that he must have heard of its horrifying lethality, but he tells him that he's still unaware of the terrors of the DOC. He tells him that today is the day he will experience it for himself, and a monster fish starts coming out of the darkness. The fish stall starts shaking, to which the man says it's starting to get impatient. Even the building has begun to shake. Zheng Hu gets concerned, and he wonders what kind of monster that is. And then, the man tells the demonic merman monarch to come forth. Then the monster fish jumps out. It's the disgusting and ugly looking demonic merman monarch. He perfectly lands. Zheng Hu gets irritated to see that creature, and he asks the man if it isn't a fish that is cultivated into a freak. He says, how disgusting that is. But then man gets triggered, and he angrily tells Zheng Hu that he won't allow him to insult the monarch. He orders the monarch to attack and crush him. Then the monarch jumps at Zheng Hu, and he hits his head and crushes it to the ground. The monarch sees that Zheng Hu was knocked out in a single hit. He says that Zheng Hu was a worthless fool after all. The man tells the monarch that this is as expected of him. He says it won't be a problem no matter how many of their henchmen show up. But then, Zheng Hu stands up, and he reminds them that he told them he was aggressive and tough and he slashes an ugly monarch. He sends the worthless, disgusting monarch away, and the monarch crashes to the fish stall. Monarch faints, and the fish stall gets destroyed. The man gets shocked to see that the monarch gets knocked out with only one punch. He tells Zheng Hu that his strength is not even humanly possible. Then Zheng tells him that, after his cells in his body went through mutation, they not only hardened, but their mass also increased drastically. In other words, he says they will weigh a ton, and all it takes is to concentrate all the mass in his hand, and he will be able to send it flying. So he asks the man what Dao's he thinks and questions him if he is still not good enough to pay up, to which the man asks him if he thinks he would just admit defeat. But Zheng Hu Saha says that he's worn out from all the fighting as well, and he says it's time to head back. However, he drags the monarch with him and starts leaving. He says that thing is so heavy and he would be able to make several meals out of it. He says that they will have soup for dinner tonight, then braise tomorrow, to which the man gets shocked. The man gets emotional. He says that he still remembers the summer of that year, the times when they were at sea. He says those were the happiest days of his life. He started crying and said that he couldn't afford to lose his ugly monarch. Then the man gives him money and mentions that both the principal and interest are there, to which Zheng Hu agrees and says that's the right amount. The man and his monarch are crying and hugging together, and Zheng Hu asks the man if he wouldn't think it would be nice if he were like this from the start, and questions him why. He insists on violence, and he asks the man if he would be able to run his business now, as it's all messed up like that. Then he shows him some money and says that this is deducted from his salary, and he tells him to use it to fix his storefront and says that he is so unlucky. Moreover, he tells him that he should hurry up and change his signboard too, as it's too stupid. The man gets emotional and he thanks him. Afterward, Zheng Hu arrived at the sincere credit loan office. Zheng Hu gives Cheng Xin money, to which Cheng Xin tells him that he really didn't disappoint him, to which Zheng Hu asks him who he thinks he is. He says there's no doubt he's unable to collect. Then Cheng Xin asks him if he pocketed the money. Zheng Hu agrees and tells him to just deduct it from his salary. So Cheng Xin tells him that's it for today, to which Zheng Hu asks him about the rest of the of the money. But Cheng Xin tells him that he can use the money he took for now. Zheng Hu gets triggered, and he reminds him that he said this time he would pay him in full after he has completed the task, and he asks him if he is messing with him. 
But Cheng Xin tells him that he didn't get his permission when he pocketed that money while collecting the debt either. Zheng Hu gets triggered and he slams the table. He shouts at Cheng Xin and says that he's deliberately out to mess with him. But Cheng Xin tells him that he took his money, says that he is fortunate that he let that slide, and tells him not to push his luck. Zheng Hu gets shocked and he asks him if he never planned on handing over the money from the start. But Cheng Xin tells him that he has already taken the money and says that, seeing as how he has worked himself to the bone under him all this time, he will let that matter rest, and he tells him not to show his face there again. Zheng Hai gets triggered and Ji grabs the collar of Cheng Xin, calling him a bastard. But then someone bangs a rod on Zheng Hu's head from behind. Zheng Hu falls to the ground, and Cheng Xin guys ask him if he's alright. Zheng Hu crawls. He gets horrifically angry. He stands up and angrily tells Cheng Xin Thag he will settle everything today with him once and for all. Zheng Hu punches him, but Cheng Xin dodges all his attacks. Zheng Hu falls to the ground, and he asks Cheng Xin how he is able to see through all his moves. Cheng Xin tells him that he has fully grasped those pathetic moves of his. He says even if he is able to harden his body, his attacks are too slow. And moreover, he tells him that since they are both murants, he will let him experience what true power looks like. Cheng Xin takes a deep breath, then he spits out mucus vomit. Mucus vomit spreads on Zhang Hu. Mucus vomit sticks to Zhang Hu's body and he can't move. Zhang Hu gets triggered. Then he says that it looks like there's no way he will be able to get the money, to which Cheng Xin asks him if he's finally willing to give up. But Zheng Hu asks him how he recognizes him as his father and tells him that he will give up the money then. Cheng Xin gets triggered after hearing that. Then other guys come, to which Zheng Hu asks them if any of them have come to recognize him as their father. Later that evening, Zheng Hu is going back to his home. He's fully injured, but he checks himself on camera and says that he's still so handsome. But his face is just awful in reality, and he decides that he will chat with the girl another time, as he's worn out from today. He reaches home, and he sees that his luggage is thrown away outside. He sees a new lock on the door, and he wonders why there is a glimmering new lock. He tries to unlock the door, but his key gets broken. He's just left with a half broken key, and he realizes that he messed up. Now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more exciting content.